last day for National Poetry Month, to celebrate National Poetry Month here in America. So we're going to go around to a few different venues, and we're going to spontaneously give them poetry. All aboard the Poe Train! Choo-choo! <laughs> so, Miss Kaya Plaka and Julia Zimmerman. Wake, snooze, drive, arrive, zone. Drive, return, repeat. Wake, snooze, drive, arrive, zone. I have woken up to the sound of my own sigh every Monday, Monday through Friday. Friday. Instant coffee, instant breakfast, instant sack lunch, the clothes you picked the night before weren't supposed to make you feel dusty. And in an instant, they have. But not enough things are instant. When you're playing hide and seek in an empty house, turning every dark corner, ripping up every floorboard, tearing apart closets, flipping over writing desks, flinging open the, the curtains, curtains, throwing books off the shelves to find the one that will open the trap door. Until you realize that that empty house it's just your body, and you've gotten lost looking for yourself inside. They say you spend over a third of your life sleeping. These days I can't tell the difference. I stopped wearing my dream catch around my neck like a gold medal because it didn't stop the dispatch of my daydreams. But I know there's an awakening inside of me. And when it's brave enough to call Ollie Ollie, Ollie Oxen free, free, I will find it, and I will wake up! Thank you. <laughs> Joey Carollo. Screw you, love. But not because you were never in my life, but for the opposite. You leave me alone and infect my heart and head, burning an ulcer in the lining of my butterfly's home. You hit me with a Louisville slugger on the side of the head, getting a home run for Cupid's favorite visiting team. But you never seem to stab that metaphorical arrow from that cherub's quiver into a girl when she's looking at that grinning, clefted, not half bad mug I call my face. <laughs> I appear to be doomed, yes doomed, to be begging for the attention from a female who loves to push me arm's length away into a square zone with a sign saying friends and saying, you're really nice, but... Nice. Yeah, that's me, love, the friend, the buddy, the pal, the chum, that guy who, it's really cool to hang out with him and he's not interested in anything more than being just friends. Love, for Venus's sake, is it possible that you could for once have the girl see past my little yellow smiley face cut out from the side of a box of Chinese food and glued to my face? That once a girl could peel back the layers and see the real smile, I only, real, I only get when I realize I'm safe. Or as Julia realizes when I'm very flustered. Yeah, I'm a hopeless romantic, but only because I'm saving my hope for the girl who sees me before I see myself. All I want, love, is a warm embrace that isn't followed by a gorgeous girl saying, Thanks for the advice, Joe. Maybe me and him can work it out after all. <laughs> yeah, love, I'm the white knight in a beautiful suit of armor hidden under an inch of ash from the dozens of dragons I had to fight to win a girl back from the throes of depression just so she could finally get with Prince Charming. And though the winning smile and beautiful hair may have fooled you, my blood is not royal, it is O positive. <laughs> my sword is so slippery from sweat and blunted from hitting bone, I don't think I can do it again. Aphrodite, how about a Juliet to my Romeo, minus the death, or an Eve to my Adam, but add in some clothes? Wait, never mind. I would be more faithful than Zeus if you would grant me a Hera. I could be the Lenin if she would be my Yoko. Oh, no, wait, you're not cutting me any slack here, are you, love? Love, when you wrap me in leather, fill my mouth with sand, and hug me from chains from a support beam in your waterfront gym, so strong women could wrap their hands in bright red gloves and beat me like an egg, were you trying to tattoo some ethereal message onto my skull from the cosmic conscious of the girl collective? Was that the self-assigned quest you appointed yourself when you had girl after girl bring me down to earth faster than a small spaceship holding a baby from Krypton? Or did you just get a kick out of slapping my ego around like a handball and cracking my mental security system like it was a bad bat? Because of you, love, every time I stop to smell the roses, the thorns cut my hand and all I can smell is the coppery, salty sweat of the opaque scarlet elixir that pumps through my chocolate box. So, love, all I can say is screw you, because you've screwed me a hell of a lot more than anyone else. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie Taylor and Claire Pearson. Awkward adjective defined as one, lacking dexterity or grace in movement, clumsy. I run into sliding glass doors. It started with a growth spurt. Limbs extending in unnatural directions so, so fast, fast I didn't know what to do with them. My mother says I am. You are about as graceful as an overgrown platypus galloping over a precious china minefield. Elegance is not in my vocabulary. I'm 105 gang pounds of low self-esteem. 
and, and no, no one, one wants to dance with a velociraptor. <laughs> Sometimes I'm 105 gangly pounds of dreams. I could be a late night tango dancer or a confident socialite dressed in poise and chiffon. But in reality, I'm 105 gangly pounds of a girl who runs into sliding glass doors. doors. Two, lacking social graces or manners. Talking has always been my forte. I'm more comfortable conversing with 60-year-old history teachers and scientists than with people my own age. They would call me pretentious if they knew what that word meant. When I open my mouth in the middle of a cafeteria conversation, oddly eloquent word vomit spills out. I'm written off as a psychologically screwed up adolescent with out-of-tune vocal cords. I'm stuck between the pages of a hand-me-down hardcover copy of Catcher in the Rye. Three, embarrassing or inconvenient. I wear a metallic headdress and coke bottle glasses. Shining metal constrictor straightening my teeth. I could be legally blind. My watery eyes can't see past my nose and reject contacts like failed organ transplants. I could be listex dyslexic. <clears throat> my shoulders are inadvertently inverted to shelter my fragile paper heart from the onslaught of prejudicial <laughs> looks. I don't want your Abercrombie and Fitch pity because my secondhand store clothes have more character than your $80 Hollister jeans. Yet I'm still that girl people stare at and don't see. Four, hard to deal with. Difficult, requiring skill or tact. I am madly in love with a boy that doesn't, doesn't even know my name. name. I could go into a hundred pathetic, pathetic poetic, poetic attempts to impress him, but I know he could care less. Social connections have never really been my strong point. Human interaction is a foreign film without subtitles. And, and I'm the only one who doesn't speak the language. Maybe I was absent the day the social fairy was passing up street smarts. The most romantic moment of my life was when I managed to squeak out a Hi! And he rewarded me with a smile. Five, requiring caution. Someone has me. It's dangerous. I'm the kind of person your parents never wanted you to be. Overall, the security blankets turned into their worst nightmare. My name might as well be bad. As in, I'm a bad daughter. Son. Sibling. Student. Friend. Influence. influence. I'm bad because... I don't wear glitter or idolize pop stars. I... Grades are perfectly average. It started with failed tests and evangelical essays. I'm not in any way, shape, or form an athlete. I'm 15 years young and I've never been kissed. My friends consist of all different social categories and, and I eat lunch in the library. Awkward is clumsy, socially inadequate, embarrassing, difficult, dangerous. Dangerous, dangerous because I, I love being bad. My clumsy movements are more real than your stiff jointed masquerade. My social tendencies give me space to, to be, be myself. myself. My average grades are only our average because the big picture is more important than math homework. And I am perfectly okay with that. Awkward adjective, see teenager. Ow! Woo! Woo!